Welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we're going to talk about accounts receivable. We're going to go through a definition, an example with some journal entries, why do we give customers credit, a few problems with credit and, and having an accounts receivable balance, and just a few other items. Okay, so the basics of accounts receivable, and really the definition is, it's money that you're due for goods or services you provided without being paid, so you've done it on credit. And I think a lot of times people who don't have a finance or accounting background just don't really think about sales on credit. They think about buying something and paying right away, but in the business world, it's pretty common for, for, for businesses to give customers, whether that customer is a consumer or another company, time to pay. I have 30 days is kind of a standard amount of time you'll give to pay someone to pay. Now, accounts receivable is an asset on the balance sheet, and it's a current asset, and we'll touch on that at the very end. Okay, so now an example. And if you follow the channel, you know that we often use an ice cream business as our theoretical business when we go through uh, learning some new things. So in this instance, you have an ice cream business and you had a contract with Whole Foods where they're going to buy your ice cream and then sell it in their stores. Now, Whole Foods is a big company. So if you want to do business with them, you probably are just going to have to agree to whatever payment terms they typically use. But in this example, let's say they agree that they will pay you in 30 days from shipment. So when you sell the ice cream, you ship it, you're going to invoice them so that their payment is due within 30 days of the shipment. Um, you'll create that invoice, you'll have a sale, but you won't have cash for 30 days. This means that you're going to have an accounts receivable asset on your balance sheet. So let's look at what those journal entries would be. Okay, so the first part of the entry, and really the main entry when you're setting up an accounts receivable, is to have the sale, which you're going to credit sales, and you're going to debit your AR. Now, if you had sold this for cash, you would have debited cash, but because you're extending credit, you have the asset of accounts receivable. Then, let's also look at the other side when you get paid. What happens then is you're actually going to credit AR for that same amount of 350, and you'll debit cash for 350. So you can see at the end of the day, you have a sale for 350, and you have cash at 350. But you kind of processes it through AR, through that debit and credit of 350. You're left with nothing in receivables, and you've got your cash for your sale. So why extend credit at all instead of getting paid in cash? And the real reason is that it's fairly common. Uh, a lot of businesses, especially companies that are B2B and sell to other businesses, it's common to have at least a 30-day payment term. But if you think about even in your real life, you know, you go to a doctor's office, you typically don't pay the doctor at the time of the visit. They bill you and have some due date later that you have to make sure you have your uh, bill paid by. And it's similar with oftentimes plumbers or electricians. Um, so it's, it's fairly common, but especially in the business to business world. And it can also drive more business. So think about the example that we just had with Whole Foods. If you really want to, if you're a, an entrepreneur and you have a startup business and you really want to be able to uh, work with a big company like Whole Foods, they're not going to pay you cash most likely. So if you want to work with them, you're probably going to have to just take their terms. Now, problems associated with AR and credit in general. So the simplest answer is you might not get paid. So they might not pay you. A customer could go bankrupt, they could just disappear to never be heard from again, whether that's a, an individual or another company. So you, you have risk of not actually getting paid. The next thing is you actually have to have a little more management and oversight of your accounts receivable. If you're selling on credit, you have to watch to see if people are paying you, you have to monitor aging, you have to chase people down for payment. If you only accepted payment actually at the time of service or at the time you sold something, you wouldn't have to worry about tracking those accounts receivable. And the last is working capital drag. So the higher your AR balance goes, the more cash that you are owed and you don't have that cash in your pocket. And this is cash that you could be using to buy more raw materials to make more, in this 
instance ice cream so that you can sell it. You could be generating more revenue for your business. It's cash that you could be using to pay yourself or your employees or a hundred different uses. And if you have too much cash tied up in AR or working capital in general, you might have to go take out a loan or get some temporary funding. So it's really important to try to manage your AR closely. A couple of closing comments. You know, if something is beyond a year, then it's considered a long-term receivable. It's no longer a current receivable like AR. It would have to be moved to some sort of long-term receivable account. Uh, typically, you're talking 30 to 60 days payment terms. That's probably the most common. And lastly, for every account that's receivable, there's probably an account payable out there. So if, again, you take this example with Whole Foods, yes, there's an account receivable when we sell the ice cream, for our ice cream business where they owe us and we have an asset. But on the flip side, Whole Foods probably has a liability or an account in, in the form of accounts payable that they have on their books that they know they have to, to pay to the ice cream shop. So that's it. That's everything we have on accounts receivable. This is a very basic view. We're gonna have some more videos in the future on working capital management, AR management, what are some metrics that you can use to, to measure accounts receivable, um, and how do you drive it to be better, and we'll have many, many other videos. So please subscribe, please like our video, and make sure you leave questions or comments, and we'll try to help you out. Again, please subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.